Peter Johnson at WheatPeteRealAgriculture.com and we're here with another real wheat growers session and I couldn't be more excited. My neighbor, Hugh Dietrich, Dietrich Farms, it's a family operation. It's absolutely amazing. The boys are involved. Krista runs the buggy. If you can imagine that, she runs, by choice, she runs the buggy. Anyway, great wheat growers and, and these, these guys are how I learn how to do it as well. I come here to learn how to grow good wheat. Hugh, give me the give me the rundown. What do you do in terms of of getting these consistently great wheat yields? Well, <clears throat> I think the first couple things you start is phosphorus with the with the wheat uh, in the fall. I think a lot of guys are doing that, but that's a must. If you're not doing that, you should hire someone else to do it. Tile drainage is a is a huge thing. Um, we split our nitrogen. We're using uh, potash on on the wheat uh, early in the spring as well, and three fungicides. Okay, and so uh, what about nitrogen rates? You'd... Um, we shoot for probably on an average, with some farms depend on the soil type, will go a little heavier or lighter, but nitrogen rates probably about 135 pounds. We'll go 90 early, early as possible, and then we do the balance uh, uh, early flag leaf. What we'll do though too is each farm will leave a kind of a check strip, so when we put our 90 pounds on, We'll uh, double up a strip maybe for 100 feet that we know where that site is. When we come back, we can see that wheat losing color and we know when the next shot should go on. Okay, so that's very cool. So this nitrogen thing, I think that's amazing because John Hurd from Manitoba Agriculture long ago talked about these N-ramp strips and that's exactly what you're sort of doing is he would actually go in and put strips in at different nitrogen rates and watch how that wheat changed color and that's how he predicted when he should put on that second application. So that's really intriguing, a strip in the field where you're doubling up the nitrogen so you can see the color variation and knowing that, that next nitrogen application. That, that's very, very cool stuff. I, I might try that, that's cool stuff. You should do it on a spot that it's easy to get at, even near the road or whatever. People don't like doing that because you're gonna have a little, uh, but then you actually can monitor it very easily. You don't wanna do it at the back or anything. You wanna do it for easy access. To yeah, for sure, it's, it's at the front. It, it's yeah. the pickup truck survey, right? Yeah. Oh shoot, I can see that difference. Exactly. It's time, it's time yeah. for nitrogen. I love that. So, okay, so a couple other quick things. Map, you said, was really important. I think everybody buddy hears that. Uh, but I did like the fact you said, if you can't do it, then hire somebody else who can because it's just yeah. that important. So I'm really big on that. And drainage, how close are we putting tiles now, Hugh? As close as we can afford. <laughs> we would like to, we're doing some, uh, a lot of them at 25 feet. We have done a couple farms at 22 and a half because with the boys and I were arguing we should, this is, should be done at 20. So we kind of split the difference at 22 and a half. But a lot of the farms are done at 30, but tile drainage is key. Yeah, tile drainage just makes the wheat survive. So the other thing uh, that, that you didn't mention, you're tram lining your wheat crop? Yes, so uh, we're on, um, a three pass system, so we're 120 feet, we have a 120 foot sprayer. We have the Amazon spreader as well, that we had to modify a little bit to go down the 120 foot, 120 inch centers, and it can spread 120 feet as well. So in our second shot of nitrogen, we use a dry product, which is urea. We're gonna look at sulfur as a huge portion as well. We're putting 15 pounds of sulfur on, but I think we wanna split our sulfur application as well and put sulfur on uh, with Amidas product, probably at early flag. Okay, so you keep coming back to early flag. So why early flag? Well, it helps control lodging for one thing too. Yeah. So yeah. We, we can't push that much nitrogen that much early. It increases the disease and everything. So we uh, feed a little bit to start and then this will control our lodging if we go at early flag. Yeah, absolutely. So I love that timing. It, it just, you, you need rain. If we were standing in Western Canada, that's getting a little dicey yeah. from a, a uh, positional unavailability, but here, no, that's cool. And three fungicides? Yes, well, we don't get a huge yield response consistently on the middle fungicide at flag leaf, yeah. but you don't need the full, our opinion is you don't need the full rate then either, but with your, when you get pushing the nitrogen rates, it actually really helps for lodging too, because you keep a healthier plant. And uh, even if you go at three quarters of the rate of picture fungicide, it could be a uh, dull quilt or Travapro or Whatever. Whatever, yeah. yeah. But so that's interesting. So the, the the middle fungicide is more for lodging control as much as it is for disease control. Yeah, and especially yeah. if you get on a really rich farm and that farm that wheat color is really dark and you think and you're worried about it going down, then that's the time to use it. On a real heavy farm, maybe you don't need the middle fungicide as, as important as the other ones. Yep. So and and last this this 
spreader behind us. How, yeah. Like, does this thing work or what? what's the deal? It's awesome. It's actually dirty right now. We've mm. just been using it, but it has been a really good piece of equipment. Um, it has all the uh, swath control and all the, and it's tied to a 2630, so we have record keeping on all the farms. So. Yeah, so what you're saying is that everybody who's a real wheat grower, if you want to do a decent job with dry fertilizer, yeah. you need a spreader, something like this. Exactly. Yep. There's different kinds too, but something better than what we're used to in the past, yep. that's for sure. And, and the tram lines are quite key as well because three fungicides, two passes through with this. Yep. Last question, potash. Why potash in the spring? Well, we do use a lot of potash and I don't like shock in the ground that we put too much on at once. So we like to feed the crop as well and put the potash on the wheat to help for disease as well too. We use a muriated potash, a red potash. Okay, so so the potash is a is with the urea then, that first application? That's one thing with these spreaders, you can't mix and match your fertilizers. You have to go with a single product. So the pot, to keep your spread patterns, like we can probably spread potash up to 160, 180 feet, but if you put another product in, they won't go the same distance. Yeah. So that's why we only one product. Interesting, so t through with the urea, through with the potash, make sure it's muriate of potash, so you have the chloride there for the disease control. Yeah. Wow, very cool. So there you have it, another excellent wheat grower on Real Wheat Growers. I just love working with these guys, they're, they're awesome, and lots of plots, right? You do lots of plots as well? Yeah, like, gotta love plots. <laughs> Peter Johnson, at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, Real Wheat Growers, be one.